Hello, we are coming to you live from the Bevan family farm here in glorious South Wales. At one of the busiest, most exciting and often nail-biting times in the sheep farming year. And of course, it is all about these little things. So sit back, enjoy the very first Lambing Live. <laughs> Good evening, welcome to a lovely, chilly, crisp evening here in Wales. And it has been a busy day for all the sheep here. All the sheep that you can see, all the adult sheep that you can see in the pens here, they're females, they're ewes, and this one gave birth just as we were rehearsing, literally three or four hours ago. You can see she had two very healthy little twin lambs, which she's showing off to you beautifully. Now, as you can see, most of these pens are full. This is sort of like a, a postnatal ward, if you like, and the ewes in here are bonding with their lambs, really forming a strong family bond before they go out into the field. But if you come through here, this is a wonderful farm full of great old buildings. This is an old cattle buyer. The cats seem to have taken it over this evening, but it won't be long before this area is full of lambs because in here, this is the sort of lifeblood of the farm in here. This is the maternity ward. And in here are a bunch of expectant mums and one expectant farmer, Jim. Hey, okay. How are you, Jim? Not so bad. Now, Jim has been my mentor for the last six months, my, my brilliant teacher. Well, I've been trying. <laughs> you've done a really well. I yes. think you've done a fantastic so. job. And it's really, really kind of you and your family to let us on your farm. I mean, I know you've been lambing for a very long time. How many years? Would you give it away, do you think? Uh, most of my life, I've been lambing, I suppose. <laughs> well, 20, yeah. 21, 22 yeah, years. Nice yeah. but, but you've never lambed live on television before. Oh, no. Very new experience to me. Yes. <laughs> Are you looking forward to Yes, uh, yes, it's, 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 it's different, but uh, I must admit it's just showing everybody what's happening and uh, I'm enjoying it now, I must admit. Good, well I'm, I'm very, very glad. Um, now tell us a little bit about the ewes in here. How many have we got in this shed? Well there's uh, approximately 90 left in here now. Okay. And there's sort of 45 triplets. Right. And. Uh, 40, 40, 40 singles, uh, d doubles in you at the moment. So that means that you've got basically about half these ewes are expecting three lambs each yeah. and the other half two. Yeah. Goodness, so we could be in for a very busy five days. That's right, yeah. And, and they could give birth at any time over this next week? Yeah, there's, there's one up in the corner that's been... Uh, so the, the black yeah. face one, sort of right at the back in the corner. She won't, she won't be long until she lambs. She's been uh, a bit restless and really? moving around and so stuff like that. So it's entirely possible that she could lamb in the next hour while we're on air? Oh, definitely. She could do, yeah. I That's, might keep you to that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, we'll keep an eye on her. But now let's go and join Adam, who is exploring another part of the farm. Well, I farm in the Cotswolds, but it's lovely to be here on the Bevans Farm in Wales. And in here, this is the infirmary, really where the problem cases come. If there's anything that needs a bit of extra tender love and care, it's in here that it comes to. And down here is Kate Bevan, Jim's wife. Hi, Kate. Hi, Adam. Busy working away. It's all hands on deck at this time of year, isn't it's it? It's all hands on deck, yeah. The whole family get involved. Now, there are farmers lambing up and down the country, and your whole family gets involved. They do, yeah. Yeah, they do. And uh, Kelly my little girl does the bottle feeding you know Sam's out first thing in the morning so yeah. wonderful Big now you've got lots affair. of problems in here what's up with this one right this little guy was uh, premature was born about a week ago but obviously he was born too early he's quite a weak lamb so we've been building him up with a little bit of milk bit of tender living care so he's not been able to go outside as yet but he's coming on really well so I reckon a couple of days and 
You'll be up to speed. A lot of the ewes and lambs in here will just stay in for a little bit longer before they go out into the fields. Yeah, that's uh, that's why we have them in here, just to keep a closer eye on them, really. And how about this little family? This is really good, yeah. So she had one little lamb of her own. And we managed to adopt another lamb on her from a triplet ewe, because, of course, they've only got two teats. So, ideally, they want to support two lambs. Yeah. So, the one that had the triplet, it was better to take one off her and uh, put her on here, and she's accepted and them And it's both. working, so she'll go out really, and fill really with two well. lambs. Wonderful. Yeah, again, she'll be out in a day or two. We've got some <laughs> noisy ones here. Now, I guess these need a bottle. <laughs> they are, and they're very, very, very hungry. They have got some... Let me get some this, uh, milk ready. Let me get this bale for us to sit on. Here we go. Let me pass them out to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, these are fantastic, aren't they? They are. Very noisy, very hungry. <laughs> so just feed away, is it? Oh, no, it's yes, feeding please. time. They Come know on. where the bottles are. Now, what was the story okay. about these, then? Because uh, you don't bottle feed that well, many lambs. No, you don't. It's, it's a little bit of a sad story again. Um, their mum died well, a couple of weeks ago now, had a little bit of a prolapse. So, um, so yeah, we, we have to look after them now and they're on the, on the bottled milk. Now most lambs, you bring them into the individual pens with their mum so that they bond as a family and get to know each other. Yep. But these ones haven't got a mother and they've really just bonded to humans. They have bonded. In fact, any human with a bottle, that'll be mum. Yeah, <laughs> because they see the food and yeah, they uh, they Now being a, being a farmer, I know that this milk powder that you mix its m milk up into is, uh, you know, it's expensive. So the economics behind these two isn't that great. No, it is expensive and yeah, if you worked it out, you wouldn't get your money back, but then you've got to think of what the alternative is and, you know, you've got to look after them. You've got to do the best yeah, you can. Yeah, they're little lambs, they're little lives and uh, you really have got to keep going with them, haven't you? Yeah. And these will go out into the field when? They'll be out in the field very soon. They'll, they'll be on the bottle for probably six to eight weeks um, and then we'll put them on creep, which is like a, a baby food. Yeah, sheep little food, pellets. You know, little yeah. pellets, that's right, and a little bit of hay. Um, and yeah, they'll be out on the grass then. Well, we'll be following these lambs throughout the week. This one's got a very big, fat, full tummy now. <laughs> and we'll be looking at all the little lambs here as we go along during the week. But let's pop back over to the stone barn and find out how Kate's getting on. Thank you very much, Adam. Well, we're just keeping a beady eye. There's actually another you here, the one that's sort of sitting up against the wall. She's she's showing a few little signs as well, yeah. Jim. Yeah, they're, they're getting close there, I see. Yeah. Like, and, uh, well... They won't be long about, but it's all according to what's happening at the moment. Like, but you can see with that one there, she's just pushing a bit and uh, getting a bit uneasy. And, uh, we'll so see it's, she gets it's on. generally what you're looking for is sort of signs of just kind of restlessness. I mean, a little Very bit like so. a woman when she's sort of starting contractions and things and just sort of feeling a bit restless and That's doesn't it. know whether to sit down or stand up. Yeah, but like, the only thing with those at the moment, they're not making a lot of noise. They're just... Uh, they're just in the early stages. Right, so, right. Uh, so once they start, will they start sort of bleating? What sort of noise will they make? Can I, always, I always say talking. They just like, it's like a little bear. bear right. And they'll just walk around in circles and making like sort of little bearing noises. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll keep our ears open. That's right. For talking sheep. Yeah. But this week is really the culmination of months of, well, planning and, and, and care by Kate and Jim. And um, really what we wanted to do now is to um, tell you a little bit about what to expect this week. I mean, we're going to tell you how best to choose a really handsome ram. And I can tell you that Jim told me is all about the testicles <laughs> um, and also how to prepare the ewes so that they are in perfect condition and absolutely irresistible to their suitors. That's all coming up later in the program. But first, let's get to know our hosts, the Bevan family, just a little bit better. Since 1940, four generations of Bevans have farmed this area. They've got about 500 acres, about as much as you can see here, and that is home to 900 ewes, 75 cows, 35 pigs, two geese, one horse, eight cats, three dogs, more chickens than I can count, and a rather splendid cockerel called Rex. And of course, the farm is also home to the Bevan family. Jim runs the farm these days and takes Come care here. of all the sheep. Yeah. Come here, that'll do. All right, Jim, shut the gate down. Right Some of the ewes need a little extra help, like this one, who's travelling in style after getting stuck in brambles. You've got to keep them in a good condition. What they produce is what we've got to live on, so... 
you have to do the best job you can to look after them, so they'll look after you. Jim lives in a converted granary in the centre of the farm with his wife Kate and their two children, 11-year-old Sam and 9-year-old Kellen. I'm Kate Bevan, farmer's wife with all the roles that takes on. I also work at the college two and a half days a week. I've always worked with animals all my life and I'm employed here as a lecturer. Tongs flicking in and out, that's a good sign. Yeah. Just tasting the air. All right, Just nice tasting you. Tasting. Farmers are not very well off at the moment. This is the income that pays the bills. Farms can no longer support families. It's down to the families to support the farms. The main farmhouse is home to Jim's parents, who are now semi-retired. Well, my name is Trevor Bevan, and I've been on this farm since 1940. If I had my time over again, I would uh, do exactly the same thing. I'm Anne Bevan. I brought up five children here, and now the two boys are farming. We still do a certain amount of work with the farm, but not so much manual labour now. And I also run the bed and breakfast business. The family has recently opened a butcher's shop in Abergavenny, which is run by Jim's older brother, Hugh, also a farmer. More and more people are asking when they come in, where do you get your lamb from? You know, food miles and cut down on emissions and what have you. It's in the public eye more nowadays, isn't it? And when you tell them you produce it all yourself, they are pleased, really, that it is locally produced, so you know exactly what you're eating, really. And last but not least, no sheep farm is complete without its four-legged friend, the sheepdog. Lass! This is Lassie. She's a five-year-old sheepdog bitch. And uh, I trained her to work sheep. She worked chickens, she worked ducks, and she loves cats. Very important part of the farm. Well, and here we are in a different part of the farm now. That's Jim and Kate's house, just there, uh, conveniently close to the very, rowing shed, so you don't miss a thing. It very is close. very close. You really do work from home, don't That's you? That's right. <laughs> I stick my head out the door like Neil shouting. So here we are in the other main lambing shed on the farm. Um, even more use in here, Jim. Yes, we put 200 in here. Right. Uh, majority of them are twins. Yeah. But there's uh, about 45 singles in mixed in with them. Okay, so in, in the stone barn, in the first barn we were in, you're, you've got sheep expecting triplets and yeah. twins. This one, mainly twins with some, some singles, singles, so yeah. they'll just have the one, right, the one yeah. lamb. Yeah. Now again, looking out over these, what I see are very content, rather sleepy ewes. No signs really of anything looking like they might be giving birth, Jim. No, not at the moment, but uh, in this shed, main of them lamb in that far corner. That well, back left yeah, corner, do they? Yeah, it's just nice and quiet over there and they get yeah. away from it and that's where they'll go and lamb. Well now there is a you there, I don't know whether um, our cameraman, it's a bit much to ask because I think she might be hiding behind a pillar, but there's a sheep sort of sitting up sitting there. Up right, yeah. Do you think, I mean, is that a sort of, could that be an early sign? What do you look for with an early sign? I mean, you've said restlessness, but yeah. are there any real giveaways? Well, is that... There's lots of different things with it, like, but usually you'll, you'll see them talking and uh, they'll be moving around and they're a bit restless and uh, quite often the be best sign is when you see them they've got a water bag out, so uh, right, that's, that's, right. that's definitely but going there, I mean, you know, we've seen them, I mean, I know um, with, with sort of seeing that, that sort of lambs getting close, or ewes getting close rather, they'll be sort of pawing the ground oh, a will, bit. Yeah. There's lots of different things yeah. they will do. Yeah, and yeah. heads in funny positions? Well, they, I always say stargazing, like this, this when they're lying down, but that's, that's when they're right in the throes of uh, sort of contractions. So they they'll are, lie back with their heads, with heads sort of right up. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll uh, obviously be keeping our beady eye on this lot, but the thing that, you know, I'm never going give, to give these sheep no. for is the fact that they always want to lamb at the most antisocial time oh, of, yeah. of day, or night, rather. I mean, you and Kate get no sleep during this period, do you? Really? No, so we sort of take it in uh, sort of shifts, so we do get a little bit between us, but uh, it's sort of the nature's way. Like, there's a, they'll lamb early hours of the morning, just as it's before it comes light. Yeah. I suppose it's nature's way sort of protection for the lambs. So they're 
born that time of the day, so they got the whole day in front of them to get strong enough for the night time then. So and then, so if it's a very cold night, like at the moment, yeah. they're in a better state to, to survive it because right, they've yeah. had a day running around yeah, and, and, and... Got and milk in their bellies. That, that's well, that's true, true. that's yeah. true. Well, um, obviously, because I've been apprenticed to Jim since September, whatever he does, I've tried to do as well, which means that I've had to have a pretty antisocial time of it in the last couple of nights. And last night, I came here at about half past ten to join t Jim on the late night shift. Um, as you can see, it's, there are chickens to watch as well. So here we are. We're actually in this very shed, just checking on everything. And it was a very quiet night. But some lambs, there we are, bottle feeding some of the yeah. lambs that need you've bottle to, feeding. You've got to feed them a few <laughs> times through the night as well. Like, so. so there is, you know, they, they're not just going to sleep through the night again like a human yeah. baby. They're not no. going to sleep through the night the whole time. They That's need right. kind of feeding and yeah, things. The, uh, the orphans do, yeah. So... Obviously, I was hoping for maybe two, three fabulous births to be able to share with you today. Nothing happened. It was so, I mean, it was like, it was spookily quiet, The girls wasn't it? crossed their legs and they didn't want to... I, I'm they beginning didn't want to take it you. personally. They just, they just don't want to <laughs> no. show me. And so Jim said at about two o'clock in the morning, he said, well, you'll be rubbish on the telly tomorrow night if you stay up any later. <laughs> go to bed. And he said, I'll just have a quick whiz round and then I'll go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. I said, OK, fantastic. What happens? I leave the farm. Ten minutes later, this. Yep. <laughs> How ironic was this, Jim? So this it is the you doing exactly as you said, that yeah. sort of stargazing thing, yeah, head out. Yeah, lip and that, yeah. So it was, it was just straight after you just got went, like it was... Uh, oh, very it's just <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yeah. and, and what's fabulous about this is that she's doing this completely on her own. You didn't need to go in and help her at no, all? No, not at all, because all I did was just watch her. Uh, like, and it's amazing. I seen the lamb was being uh, present, presented in the right condition. Oh. Presentation with the two feet and the, the nose there, yeah. and I didn't have to touch it then, like so. Just let it do it naturally. Oh, I mean, it's just. I, I, I mean, you must have seen a million birds, but do, yeah. does it still make you excited? Oh, it does, but uh, after after we've had about 600 lamb, it's not so exciting then. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiring. I'm not at that stage. <laughs> but look at this one. I mean, this one, uh, this, the, so the second one came out about 20 oh, minutes later. Yeah, and I just shot out. That was that one. She won no time having that at all. No. And is she Amazing. quite an experienced mum? Because I know you've got a mixture here, yeah. haven't you? Of views that have never lambed before, yeah. and, and and some that are experienced. There's about, there's about sixty yearlings in each which haven't lambed, and then this and about it's just fourth or fifth set of lambs. Like so, so she's a she's good, experienced yeah. yeah, mum, and I yeah. mean that is just the, the most fantastic sight. And of course, you would be absolutely within your rights to say, so where are they now? Follow Jim. Let's go and have a look at her. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> she just down here. Yep, she just oh down by here. Oh my yeah. goodness! Uh, look at on, them. One was on the suck then. Oh, they look uh, great. Can I pick one up? Yeah, can I no have a look at, Come on, can I have a look at your baby? Sorry, just borrowing him or her for a second. That's <gasps> the one that was born first, I was. So. Now, our production team have been naming the lambs. Uh, what are these ones called? Scarlet and O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> Do you approve? Oh, we've got names for all of them this year. <laughs> we really have. There's a first have. for everything, I tell you. And, and these are good, strong, healthy lambs. Yes, oh, good lambs, these are. Oh. Very good. Yeah, well, a, a real, real treat. I'm very sad that I missed the live birth, but Just. we won't be missing <laughs> any next step of their progress. And they'll go That's out in the field quite soon, Jim, you think? Yeah, probably go tomorrow. Really? Yeah, as quick tomorrow, as that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can be sure that we will see their first steps in the big, wide world. But thank you very much indeed, Jim. And to get here, you have to start with finding some splendid rams. And back in September, when I first mm -hmm. met Jim, he took me on a very unusual first date. <laughs> We're in Bulth Wells at the largest ram sale in Europe. Over 6,000 farmers are here to buy their tups for the start of the new season. It's an important day in the farming calendar and a family day out. I'm with Jim, Kate, Trevor and Jim's brother Hugh looking at a collection of over 5,000 rams. So Jim, what do you make of these particular sheep here? Well, they're, like the ram lambs, they were born last December. They're very well bred sheep. If you look at them, they got a clean head, and they want a good width in the hind quarter. So good bum, basically. Yeah, good bum. Yeah. And a good firm jigger down here. On and each also, side. And also, the most important thing about a tub is you want two good balls. <laughs> you want a good <laughs> pair of balls on it. And, now, how, 
at it. How do you, I mean, without wanting, well, no, let's get graphic. How do you tell whether it's got two good balls or not? Well, I can feel it. Like, you go down there, you've got two testicles the same size. Right. And they, they, this is good for them, and it's, that's what you want to look at. Girl, is a girl allowed to do this without of asking? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, those those like, are certainly the same size, and exactly, judging on my my not my not extensive experience, I'd say they they felt quite good. To me, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah. but do they know what to do? Isn't it better for you to buy an experienced ram that's done this job before? No, like it's in them naturally, and that's it. Like, but uh, if you're going to buy a ram ram like this. You've got him for seven years. So yeah. buying got, a nine-month-old is a, is a good got, investment for you. You've got their life in front of you. Right. Okay, should we go and look at some more? Yeah, no problem. They're lovely. Uh, Jim's brother Hugh is looking for a tougher breed for his hill farm. A hell of a pen of rat here. Have you seen any you like the look of? I know my mark down here. Ah. Yeah. So what are, you, are you also going to go for Charolais? No, or no, you? I don't like them. What's wrong with them? <laughs> Too Nash. Too what? Nash. Nash? Soft. Soft? Yeah. What, what do you mean soft? Sort of... Well, they don't like the weather. That with me is a bit higher than Jim. Oh, so, I know. see. So what are you going for? Texel. Texel is tougher, better for higher altitudes. Yeah. He's so fun. After two new rams today. It's an important investment for the farm and requires an experienced eye and steady nerves to get the best rams at the right price. The price of rams can vary from a couple of hundred pounds to a couple of thousand. Jim's hoping to spend about 500 on each ram, but some are totally out of his league. Seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand, eleven hundred. This is the one that you wanted. It's already over a thousand guineas. Yeah. You've got two good nine, Jim. That's the problem. It's seven, eight hundred, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred. So what do you want to do? Look for something else from that farm, and you know you've got good breeding. You know you've got good breeding. Always good breeding. Two thousand six hundred. Sold at two thousand six hundred. Two thousand six hundred guineas. Yep. This has got to be a handsome ram. Finally, Jim enters the bidding on one of the rams he's picked out, quietly hoping that the price doesn't rise beyond his reach. Oh, he's going, he's going for it. Is he good? Yeah. You can get to this afternoon when you can look at the ones being sold. Oh no, we should have got those. Oh, um, oh, really glad we bought them when we did. Yes. It's a gamble. Farming is a gamble. Jim's bought one ram, but will his luck hold for the second? It's high 20 by 20, but 520. Is that yours, Jim? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I'm making pardon. Throughout the sale, almost £2 million worth of business goes under the hammer. Jim spent £1,176 on his two rams, and he's happy. I'm just going to get them home. <laughs> Well, that's what you're looking for, a nice strong top. It's certainly strong, my word. What will happen to them now? They're They'll... staying here now until for the use next one. Just through the gates in between. I'm very pleased with what we have bought. It's good quality stock, so it's not extortionate dear, and uh, they ain't too cheap, but they are good sheep for the money. Well, you certainly got some fantastic looking rams there. Well, thank you very much. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> and they these are barns around the farm are lovely, aren't they? They're absolutely beautiful, yeah. We're very, very lucky with them. We've recently, um, with a bit of help, had them restored as well, which is Wonderful. very nice. Now, those rams, those charolais, do produce some great-looking lambs, don't they? 
I mean, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. I mean, these two were born uh, last night, and as you can see, size of them, they're uh, they're fantastic. Absolute monsters. Absolute monsters, <laughs> yeah, but beautiful with it. And why do you choose a shower? What do you like about them? <clears throat> I like, uh, personally, I like Charolais because they've got a nice small head so that for um, lambing purposes they're quite easy to uh, to come out if you've got a, a tub such as a, a say a texel it's got a really big head yeah. can cause problems um can get stuck so yeah and they you know they produce a nice meaty lamb fast growing i mean these really are fantastic and all you know the shepherd's ideal you've got two big lambs lovely you everybody's yeah. happy yeah it is it's the perfect scenario but it um, doesn't always work like that though Doka. okay you've got some problems around here no unfortunately not and yeah we have got a a little problem here can around the corner we can all right my boy as Goodness you can see, me, look at, they're the half the size of those other ones, aren't they? Yeah, and older as well. These were actually born on, uh, on Friday morning. Um, I did have to help her with these. She's, she's a bit of a poorly mum as well. And uh, yeah, they were very small, very weak, and all of them I had to tube literally, you know, sort of an hour after they were born because they were too, too weak to suck on. And last night, um, Jim and Kate Humble were in the barn. They need 24-hour care, don't they? So they were helping them out. That's right, they were, yeah, because they'd be taken from the mum um, all the time if they were, you know, with her. So we've got to do the equivalent and, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to do it 24 hours a day. And that tubing you mentioned, Jim's doing it now. Just talk us through that. Yeah, the reason is because they're so weak, so cold, um, they're too weak to suckle. And if we try tried bottle feeding them, it can actually go down the wrong way, uh, can choke them. So what we do is we put a little tube into the mouth, straight into the stomach to put the nice warm milk into the stomach, fills them up and also warms them up because, you know, they do get cold. Now lambs are born with sort of internal brown fat, aren't they, that keeps them going for a certain amount of time, but that milk is essential and the heat lamp's going to help. Yeah, we got the infrared in um, to give them a, a little bit of extra help or else they will get hypothermic, they will get very cold and they will die. And sadly there were three, but now there's only two. Unfortunately, yeah, the little one, which was the first one to be born actually, was, was very, very weak, very, very small and we did lose her this morning so, and the, is yeah, the you gonna be sad. okay I hope so we've um, we've done everything we can you know we've we've given us some antibiotics and we've just got to wait now well we'll be following these ewes in here and the, the little lambs to make sure they got on okay and we'll be giving them lots of tender loving care but let's pop back over to the corrugated barn anything happening over there Kate uh, Jim was just checking that you that we were looking at earlier but Nothing? No sign. No Not sign. At the moment. Oh. No. But just just seeing that um, the sad story of, of, of that not well you and yeah. and the and the triplets now twins. I mean it must be terribly frustrating for someone like yourself who tries to do your best by your sheep all the time, but it's it is a complicated business looking after sheep. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like my grandfather always used to say, when you've got livestock, you got dead stock. Right. It is a part of it. Like you don't like losing any lambs, but when you've got this amount, you can't keep them all alive. No. But we do try, but uh, you do. Well, you I've seen it. You do battle, you and, and I mean, there are an enormous number of questions that keep arising. I mean, I'm still learning. I know you That's say right. you're still oh, learning. I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, so, if there are any questions that you would like us to try and answer uh, during the next few days, then do email us on lamminglive at bbc.co.uk. Now, let's go back to September. We've got our two beautiful rams, uh, but now we have to make sure that the ewes are in tip top condition before they meet them and so for a while this farm became something like a beauty parlor <laughs> they're looking expectant ah, <laughs> so, so are these all the ones that we've got to do today yes yeah, our job we're doing today yeah. wow trim the feet of them and then uh, we'll tail them all off now so they're nice and clean and so when tidy. you say tail them all off what does that actually well, mean well electric shearing machine yeah and we'll clean all the tails right off them. Right. And they take it down the side of the legs. So okay. they haven't got no back on them and they're clean and tidy. So Ready for the of, if, if they were girls, it would yes. be like having a Brazilian. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Thank you. 
So you're going to get the yep. five or six into that shearing pan. Into the, into the trailer. Shut this gate. Yep. Before the ewes get their tails trimmed, Jim checks their feet for any problems and gives them a quick manicure. So you're just trimming just, this back. It's exactly like back. cutting fingernails, basically. Yep. Just. Uh, she's see. really overgrown there. Yeah, isn't she's she? overgrown. So I'll just trim this up. She so just want to take it down. Yeah. So you can see a bit of infection. Yeah. In there, so. They off. seem to be really prone to it, sheep. Oh yeah. If you don't look after the feet, they will get bad. So feet done. Okay. The other thing we got to check is the elders. Is the what? Elder. Elder. Just to put your hand in here. Right. And make sure that both elders, both sides, are still so in. So an elder is a is it an udder? Is the it's same? The udder, yeah. Just yeah. check it out. Check check so it. You just check that there's check that two both teats. Is, yeah, two teats, no infection in it. So if there were infection, like you would could it, have a, you could have a lump in there, or the one teat is uh, damaged. Good girl. I know we haven't met yet, and it's a bit personal, but you know what? Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yep. Okay. Right. You come the top side of me, okay? And hold the head there. Okay. Got it. And clean all this muck off, eh, look? You got them clean. Not nice a job then for the tough. Yeah. The only thing with doing like this, you do have to watch these tendons here. Right. When they're coming down, you got to watch them don't cut down. Well, do you look very practiced at this? We've done it for a few years now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let the hand piece do the work. Don't pull a wall, just follow it round. Right. That's the only thing you've got to watch, is that there? Is that back bit there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so down the tail. And then lift the tail up. Yeah, just watch your fingers as they're there. Oh, how's that? Crack, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Look <laughs> 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 when they wiggle them like that. <laughs> 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 don't wiggle. Get your bum out of my face, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Go on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I, 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 I really do. There you go, girls. And they're sprung loaded there. So. None the worse for wear. And that's a hundred done. No, no, eight hundred. Eight hundred to go. <laughs> <laughs> and they look tidy with tidy tails. Yeah, they do. No self respecting ram is going to be able to resist them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I, I nearly died that day. I've never been so exhausted. I'm not sure about her shepherding skills though. <laughs> she, she was gently perspiring that day. Wasn't it? I was sweating like a pig. I tell you. It was exhausting. I mean, the, the, the shearing is really scary because, you know, I mean, they do just oh, blinking yeah. wiggle all the time and you yeah. make it look so easy. You just whiz those shears round and they're fine. Done it a long time. I know, but it's really hard. These are big animals, Kay, aren't they? They are big animals. And when we were trying to do the feet and Jim would go, up to you, you know, and just sort of, I don't know, tickle her behind the ear and she'd be there on her back. <laughs> and I'd go up and go, right, like, come on. And I'd have hold of the ear and she'd just stand there looking at me. Going, and they're probably, what, 75 kilos? Yeah, they're heavier than yeah, you. They, would be. they yeah. are, they are heavier yeah. than you. I'm not sure I'd give her a job. Would you give her a job, Jim? Do you reckon? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Beginning of the day, it was a bit dodgy, but by the time she finished, I must admit, she is she was going well. Yeah, I was I was impressed. Though, I was you were really. both very mean. Uh, just remember, you no. know, we have this conversation when she's I'm not a bad apprentice at all, really. Is no, she? she's been, you know, picking it all up. I think you're a bit of a natural farmer. Actually, really. I've, I have really loved it, and it is so fascinating. But mm. I have to say, you know, six months, and, and actually, all you learn is how much there is to learn. Yeah, there is always masses. Isn't and there's there? more to learn after. Now then, well, while Kate has been a rookie shepherd on the farm here, Jim. Apprentice for the last six months, I've been travelling all over the British Isles looking at various different breeds. And a few weeks ago, I went to visit one breed that is very close to my heart. When I was a lad, my father took me on a great adventure to save a rare breed that only lived on a single Scottish Isle. 
Legend had it that this sheep could swim, would shed its own wool and lived off seaweed. 35 years later, I'm returning for the very first time. Thanks very much. North Ronaldsay is the northernmost Orkney Isle, on a parallel with Oslo. This treeless island is home to just 60 people and three and a half thousand sheep. This is what I've come to see, the North Ronaldsay which takes its name from the island it calls home. There's very few places in the world where you'll see sheep like this, living on the seashore, eating seaweed. Back in 1832, island crofters built a wall to save the grass for cattle and crops. So the sheep were forced onto the beach, but they thrived there. Unlike sheep on grass, these guys actually fatten up over winter when storms wash up even more of their food. The locals need all the help they can get when they decide to catch some for slaughter. It's a million miles away from working my flock in the Cotswolds with sheepdogs. I've been invited along to help do a punding, which is when they round up the sheep off the beach. And, uh, it's really hard work, these people are so fit. And the sheep are just like dealing with a wild animal. Woo! Hey! Hey! The first stage is complete. We've cornered as many as we can. So you're waving seaweed and chucking rocks and anything you can. It's just manic. At the other end of the beach, another team have a digger to help them. Sinclair Scott, who was born on the island, has seen it all before. I don't think they're having much success at the moment. No, they're running the wrong way, aren't they? Yeah, but the sheep will get tired eventually. Yeah. And the tractor won't. <laughs> Finally, we get the sheep running the right way. So we'll run through that gate there in a second and, and uh, get up behind them. That's the most amazing bit of sheep herding I've ever done. These are really spooky little creatures. They're so quick on their feet on all those rocks. It's really hard running and keeping them up together. We lost about a quarter of them. So now you've just got to pick out the good ones, Sinclair. So what are you looking for? Well, you just look for the, the biggest ones, first of all. The one with the biggest frame. Yeah. And then have a look at the condition they're in. But you don't want to pick ewes or lambs. No, that's right. And what are you, so how old are the ones you're after? About four year old. Four so, years yeah. old? Um, he's a big fella, big the one there, shall I grab yeah. him? Grab him, yes, and see what he's like. <coughs> it's strange for me sorting out you know, sheep for slaughter that are this old. And uh, yes. you know, usually I'm feeling prime fat lambs that are 16 weeks yeah. old. <laughs> this high quality mutton is sought after by top London restaurants. North Ronaldsay lambs are just too small and not meaty enough, but there's a trick to checking their age. Sheep have only got teeth on the bottom jaw at the front, they've got molars at the back, but they grow baby teeth to start off with, and then they grow two teeth in every year of their life. So, so there's one with two teeth, two with four teeth, three with six teeth, four when he's full mouth. So he's at least four. It seems like I'm doing all the work here, Sinclair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> the selected sheep will take the weekly ferry for slaughter on the Orkney mainland. All the rest are released to roam the shores, free until the summer shearing roundup. I first came here with my dad in 1974. As this sheep breed only remained on one island, the fear was that a disease could wipe them out completely. We wanted to spread the risk, relocating a flock off the island. It was an epic undertaking. 
but they made it back to my farm in the Cotswolds, where the descendants of those sheep live on. Today, North Ronaldsay is still inspiring dedication. The sheep even have their own biological scientist who was drawn to the island to study them. What's it like living in a place like this? Oh, well, it's marvellous. I mean, um, apart from it being a beautiful island, I get to live with uh, some three and a half thousand sheep. <laughs> now, it looks to me like oh, you've got some, uh, some very old boys here. Oh, do, do, you, do you not eat them? Good heavens, no. <laughs> the very thought. Eat your friends. <laughs> as well as caring for any injured sheep, June Morris is helping a DNA research team to find out just how primitive this breed really is. DNA is sort of, it gives you a sort of molecular footprint and you can map the movements and the origins of sheep and not just uh, the sheep because sheep came with man. This breed is thought to have arrived here around 5,000 years ago but June hopes to know for sure within a year. Where do you think they came from originally? The studies that uh, have been taking place over the last few years indicate that there was a movement of sheep after domestication across Russia into Scandinavia. What we don't know is where on the time scale the North Ronaldsay sheep fit. Did they go from Orkney to Scandinavia or the other way around? What makes these North Ronaldsay sheep so special, do you think? I think really the fact that they're living history They've got very individual and attractive characters. If you think of the modern breeds where there's been high selection and they all look very much alike, then you've got the other end of the spectrum when you look at a North Ronaldsay. So they're just fascinating, really. The islanders have always known there was something special about them and their passion for this traditional way of farming has been great to experience. It's been fantastic to come back to North Ronaldsay and see these little sheep in their homeland. They're such an important part of life here and there's very few breeds of sheep that would survive in these harsh conditions on the shoreline. And although it's tough, it's very free. And little primitive breeds like this are essential, not only to the crofters and the history of the island, but as a breed in Britain. Well, they are an amazing little breed. Do you fancy a few of those on your farm, Kate? Do you know what? I would, actually, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I, have, I have come across this with Jim and had a little conversation, and he says I can't. <laughs> What's all that about? Well, I've got 15 ewes at home, and I reckon I could spare you a couple, and I could give you a little quote. That would be good. I'll yeah, have a little quiet word be... when Jim's out of the way. And that would be those, the way. let me grab a lamb, let, let me show you. Those little North Ronald says, when they're born, they're about the size of this fella's head. They are so tiny. They're that small. And born right on the seashore, and their mothers are just amazing. That natural, ancient instinct. They must but be pretty tough. They are incredibly yeah. tough, really. But these, you know, the modern breeds, you know, are poles apart, aren't they, really? They're disagreeing with you, <laughs> behind, actually, yeah. They are. I'm not sure about that, are you, mate? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, we have got our Welsh mountain sheep, which are my favourite, and I think they're the closest we've got. Um, and again, you know, they're great. They're very hardy. They lamb outside. Um, and tough little nuts, yeah, a little bit tougher than than some of the ones in here. And really, I suppose, because we've gone for size, then, you know, sometimes we've created a few problems for ourselves, really, when they do need looking after very carefully. They do need looking after, and I think this is why Jim, yeah, Jim won't let me just run, you know, sort of rare breeds. We do have to have some commercial ones, and, yeah, I understand that. Now, of course, when you've got lambs, you need the rams. And five months ago, Kate went to see the boys, the tups, or rams, doing their little job. It's a big day for the two new rams that Jim bought at the auction. They're being brought in to get them ready for action. Since they came to the farm, they've only been in this field. This is the first day that they're being moved out, and really the first time they're meeting Lass, the dog, and suddenly their lovely, luxurious life in a beautiful green Welsh field is about to be turned upside down. But Lass is doing a good job. Come here. They're quite handsome, aren't they? Lay down! Lay down! Whoa, oh. boys. Whoa. Come on, good lad. Steady, steady now, steady. Steady. There we go. 
Oh, boys. Keep up my garden, boys. <laughs> In order to see how the rams perform, Jim rubs an oily paint on their chest known as rattle. Yeah, and it just looks like normal paint. What it is, is a mixture of uh, a powdered rattle right. and oil. And it just turns into a paste. But uh, if, you don't put a, if you don't put a glove on, you make a hell of a mix. <laughs> this blue mark will then be transferred to any use that they mate with. Yes. And you'll see exactly which ones have been mated and which yeah. ones haven't. Like if we're doing for the first week in the blue and then get a green and put on for the second week. And oh, so you can see, see exactly see what's, see what's going, going on. on like. Rub it. It's between both front legs. Yeah, on the brisket there. A bit in the wallet. <laughs> you get in your shape. All right. So just get a big old fist of it like that. It's sort of well, like cake icing, isn't it? It is a bit. And then and right under his brisket. I'm doing the good. <laughs> and not oh, on these. Yeah. He's like it now already. <laughs> <laughs> the one I've got didn't make that noise. You obviously haven't got the magic touch. <laughs> How's that looking? That's fine. Yep. Well, uh, um, just one small point. Yep. Kate, have you noticed? Jim can't go kissing anybody well, strange. Well, I was going to Billy Connolly thing going on yeah. with the beard then. We'll know what you've been up to. <laughs> we'll, we'll say nothing. Don't go inspecting me in the no. morning. No. <laughs> I don't need a rattle on me anymore. <laughs> Kate, wild. do you want to name these two? Uh, I don't know. Shanklin. That's a Welsh rugby player. Hercules. As you can see, Jim doesn't normally name his sheep, but we want to be able to identify them. <laughs> well, so, the big ones are Hercules, isn't it? You think the big one's Hercules? Yeah, I was like, All right. Okay. And, and then this Shanks. is Shanks. Okay. Hercules and Shanks. It yeah. Is. Come on then, boys. Let's get you out with those girls. All right. We could put bets on. Who's going to pull first? <laughs> Sniffing them. Hopefully. I'm getting all excited. Come here. Come here. You lass. Come here. Lass! Lay! Oh. She said they're running away. <laughs> come here, you lass. Jim, what's going on with you? Nothing. Dog has been a pain in the ass. Here, come here, you lass. You lass, you lass. Oh, come right, here. Go on, go on, go on. Watch yourselves. It wasn't come exactly here. the yeah, most romantic here. of meetings. Lass! Lass decided to play Cupid and drive the ewes back down to the rams. And the rams, suddenly faced with 85 women, <laughs> took flight and belted down here. But look, they have definitely got a whiff of something Come exciting. Here. Come here. What do you think, Jim? Be right now. Is it running away? Oh, look at that. That's devotion. <laughs> That's extraordinary. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they haven't worked before, so they're just getting used to it. But it won't be long until they'll know what to do. I you hope. hope. <laughs> yeah. They'll soon get the idea now. And now they're starting oh, to yeah, chase them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love is in the air. Everywhere I look around. There he goes, look. Yay! Brilliant. Look at that. Love is in the, air. the two novices, Shanks and Hercules, are joined by a pro team of seven more experienced tops who'll spend the next 21 days doing their very best to get round hundreds of views on the farm. But it's something that I must believe in. And it's there when I love the ewes are behaving completely differently as well, aren't they? Look at them! Look at them! Terrible top! But lots of them. Oh, there, there you go! go. <laughs> this is the year starting again for me. But it is, it is a nice day when you put the tubs and you think, well, five months' time, we're going to be lambing. Come on in. Well, they got there in the end, didn't they? I, it, I know, it took them a little while. I thought that, honestly, when we, when we saw them running away from the news, it was just the funniest thing I've <laughs> ever seen. Now, just do want you to have a quick, quick look, because Jim's in the other barn checking. Um, that you lying down, so you've got the speckled face yeah, at the back. black faced one. Black faced yeah. one at the front. And she's the one that we sort of noticed at the beginning of the show looked a little bit restless. See, she's doing quite a lot of just being restless and yeah. looking at, what do you think? Well, she's, when they put their head back like that, that means they're often sort of early stages of labour. I would say she's close, but probably not before the end of the show. <laughs> 
the many, many things I've learned since doing this project is that lambing does only happen generally at this time of year. And I assumed that farmers made it happen at this time of year because you've got the spring grass coming through, but that's not the case, is it? No, well, it really goes back, way back to the very early primitive breeds of sheep and they're seasonal animals. They right. come into season, so they're ready to take the ram as the day length gets shorter. So sort of end of October time, right through to Christmas is when right. they can conceive. Yeah. And then they'll give birth sort of January time, right through to May. I mean, it is, it's, it's true because uh, the, the Bevans, for example, have got 900 ewes, and obviously they try and spread the lambing as much as possible, but it is indeed through that period. It is sort of um, January, so the very first lambs arrived here, end of January, beginning of February. They're out in the fields now, all skipping around, looking really healthy. This is the sort of second batch um, now, and then there'll be a later batch that will come in April. Great. I mean, it's, you know, whatever suits people's workload, really, and having 900 sheep lambing all at once is a lot of work work for two people to manage. So they've spread it out and it suits them very well. So you can control the spreading out, you just can't say, I tell you what, let's have lambs in October. Apart from there's a couple of breeds that you can, Portlands, which are a rare breed, yeah. and then Dorsets, which will lamb out of season. And some people will use the Dorset, particularly in the dairy industry when you're milking sheep, for producing cheese, because you get their milk all year round. Oh, of course, yeah. Because that, yeah, that would be a problem. With cows, presumably, they can, they can have, come into calf all year round, but with Absolutely. sheep, you have to choose your breed. That's right. And that, and that cheese making is something that I followed in the programme. We'll be looking at later on in the week. OK, brilliant. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, now, the Bevans haven't just uh, willingly, well, I'm not sure how willingly, but they did take me on as an apprentice, which was very, very kind of them for the last six months, but they've also documented their life in the run-up to this crucial week. So now, let's go back to late October, where our rams have been with the ewes for a few weeks. November, we're in the middle of autumn. Jim's been spreading the muck on the fields to prepare the ground for all the new lambs that'll be grazing next year. Our new rams, Shanks and Hercules, have spent the last three weeks serving their ewes, but their work's not over yet. Today, we're separating them out from the main flock so that we can put them in with our last bunch of ewes who'll be lambing late into April. It's always a gamble with new tups as to whether they're producing the goods, but no, Tuppy's going really well at the moment and these ewes are looking great. As we put the sheep through the race, Jim's sorting out the sheep and bringing the tups out. You know, here comes old Shank, then. As you can see, they still got condition on them. They've done their job and they're still looking well. They've got full of meat, so they'll do another job again now. Hercules has had a bit of a fight with another tub. And what they tend to do, they go up in the air and down and their heads bash together. And this is what has uh, That's what happened to old Hercules here, which is why he's got a bit of a purple head, because obviously then we had to spray the wound. So it's an old wound. It's all healed up. Yes. We mark them again with a rattle so we can check if they're really earning their keep. I like this tub the best. Yeah. There's a bit of a spurt, but you do have to be careful around the rams. Oh, you <laughs> I missed that, love. <laughs> oh, bye, right. Right. Yeah, you're mute, Clive. You okay? Yeah, don't worry. Powerful animal. If they catch you right, they're gonna break your leg without even thinking about it. I'll leave him in here now for three weeks. Other reasons. And uh, in three weeks' time, we'll take all the tips out then. Now it's a waiting game. 
We leave the tubs to finish their work and enjoy a rare moment of peace and calm. It's really lovely to have a bit of time together as a family. It's a break at this time yeah. of year. It's quite quiet in uh, October, November. And it's great going out in the fields at the moment and seeing the rainbow of colours on the ewes because you know the tops are doing the job, right? <laughs> it's a bit like autumn, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a little autumnal colours all over the sheep. Yeah. It's a relaxing time, really, at this, this time of year. It's nature's way of getting us to relax and get more sleep, ready yeah. for those sleepless nights ahead. Yeah. I bet it feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? That bit, have you been able to relax, just watch fireworks of an evening? Yes. It does seem a long time ago now, <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, those it's rams done a wonderful job, but, um, you know, where's their fatherly instincts? They don't seem to be in here looking after their wives. <laughs> no, they're in the field they're just looking after themselves now. First job. It is, it is extraordinary, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you know, their, their kind of job is, is three weeks of, as Adam put it so sweetly earlier on in the programme, doing their little job. <laughs> um, and now they can just wander about in the sunshine, you know, doing a bit of sort of chewing and burping and just being Leaving blokes, the women really, to do all the work. Exactly, Kate. I mean, how much do you recognise <laughs> that? But have they been good rams? Have they proved that all that hard work that they did back in October and November has come to fruition? Yeah, I think so. Very good tips. Like we put them with a uh, hundred of these and seventy uh, well shoes. Yeah, they've served all those, and uh, we've just started. Uh, Lambing their, their lambs now. So These ones here? We have got proof yeah. that they're These good are Shanks and Hercules they lambs, are Shanks aren't Hercules. they? Oh, can, I, can I have one? <laughs> yes! Oh my there goodness! Go. They're fantastic looking lambs. So when oh. were these born? Um, they were uh, about two days ago. These were born triplets. So uh, triplets, yeah. two yeah. days. Old. What yeah. are they? I've got, I've got a little girl. Little by the girl. Looks of things. Oh, little girl. Three little, girl. Oh, three little, three little girls. girls. Oh, they are looking absolutely fantastic. All healthy. Yes, very healthy. And a good yeah. sort of relatively easy birth for the yeah, ewe. Yeah, she's a she's a fourth a fourth at Lamber though, so yeah. uh, no not a problem. Yeah, they were all right. So hopefully these will be the first of many of Shanks and Hercules lambs that appear this year. Yeah. Right. I yeah. think so. Oh, well, I'm very, very pleased that our first date has uh, awesome. resulted in such <laughs> beautiful lambs. They're so even, aren't they? They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Well, well, don't was... forget that if you have l any questions about uh, mm -hmm. lambs or sheep or lambing, then you can email us on lambinglive at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> and, of course, you're going to want to know what's coming up tomorrow. And I can't wait for tomorrow because... <laughs> You're going to see the highlight of my lambing apprenticeship when I first helped give birth to my very first lamb. And I'll be looking at sheep of all different colours, shapes and sizes. I love this shot. It's like a sort of sheep fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our cameras are going to be here for the next 23 hours following all the action that happens in this lambing shed. I think Jim and I, we're doing the late shift again, we're aren't doing we, late shift, tonight? Yeah, yeah. Um, don't forget, if you want to know more you can go onto our website um, but we will be here again tomorrow night at eight o'clock lots more lambs for you we'll really look forward to seeing you then so until then have a very good night good, good night, night. Good night.